I'm Chris Como, back with Swing Expedition, and we're here at Mission Resort with Gary Gilchrist. Gary got his start in golf as a player, and his professional golf interests led him to seek help from David Ledbetter. Good swing, Gary. Now over the top there. He quickly realized he had a passion for teaching and went on to assist Ledbetter in his coaching of players such as Nick Price, David Frost, Mark O'Meara, Andy Bean, and Ernie Ells. Gary heads up one of our more exciting programs, which is our Junior Academy. In 1995, Gilcrest was charged with developing the first full-time junior golf academy in the world. It turned out to be a massive success. He went on to develop two more of the world's most successful junior golf programs, one being his very own, the Gary Gilcrest Golf Academy. Well, number one, they keep me young. Number two, it's lovely to inspire young people to believe that they can do something in their career that they never thought they could do. Gilcrest has also spent much of his career working with some of the best players in the world, having coached the likes of Michelle Wee, Paula Kramer, Yanni Sang, Lydia Ko, Sean Song Fung, Susan Pedersen, Morgan Hoffman, Nasa Hataoka, and Aria and Moria Jutanagar. So I have over 70 wins worldwide, most on the LPGA Tour, but I've had quite a few wins on the European Tour and, and a few wins on the PGA Tour. It gave me credibility and it also gave the students the opportunity to be standing there hitting balls next to somebody who they didn't even notice and then suddenly that person ends up becoming number one in the world. Gary, I've known you for almost 20 years. Share with us some of the things that you work on with golfers of all skill levels. Well, you know, when I first started out, you know, I learned a lot from David Ledbetter at his academy. So I learned the basic fundamentals are so important. That I worked at with you and I brought you golf balls. I was like your, 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 your hand helping you get the range balls for your, for your students. Yeah, well, those were the great old days when uh, we first started the Junior Academy. Yep. Everybody thought we were crazy to start in Junior Golf. And it's amazing how that's exploded over the years. With junior golfers, I mean, you obviously work with some of the best juniors in the world, but you also get golfers who are just starting out. So maybe we start there with those, those early golfers, a couple of drills that can help anybody build a golf swing. Yeah, for sure. And again, it always comes back. People always talk about a grip, but if you go to top golf or any range and watch people hit, what's the first thing you see? A very, very poor grip. Yep. So the first thing I look at, especially the left hand grip, okay. because most choppers that I see who play the game, grip it in the palm of their left hand. Okay. And once it's in the palm, very little rotation and the face stays shut. Now they bend their left arm and now they overuse their body. Mm -hmm. So what I try and get them to feel is put the club next to their side and now you can feel that you're gripping it from on top and not from underneath the grip. Is this, does this look? That looks great. Okay. And then you can look down at the face and then when you bring it up in front of you and balance it, you can feel that the thumb balances the club and you can feel that the back of your left hand matches the face. Okay, so if I understand you correctly, we're trying to get this part of the hand to be parallel to the leading edge of the face. Face. And that's more or less like a, a very neutral grip. Yes, and then once you get that, now the game starts to become way easier because now the club face can stay square, especially through impact. And where would this fall in my hand? So you mentioned it in the palm before, so. Yes, yeah, so it's more across perpendicular down in the fingers more. So like down like this? Yes. Okay. And then you can feel right there, the left hand V points where? More at your right eye. Okay. So, so if it starts pointing more at your right ear, that means now the club is gonna really release quickly and shut. Okay. So some of the people, it's good to have a stronger grip if they wanna learn how to draw the ball, especially if they've been fading it for the last 35 years. Yeah. And they wanna see a beautiful little draw, they can actually see and experiment how strong you want their left hand grip. Yeah. And why that's so important is now when you grab with your right hand, and you can see now when I match the face of the club with the right hand, you can slide it down, put it in there, and you can have an interlock, overlap, or 10 finger grip. Now the two V's are gonna start matching each other. I see. So they're gonna be more married. Instead of now, a lot of people, they either get the right hand way too strong, so now it's gonna shut down, or most people get it really weak. Mm. So with a weak right hand grip, guess what starts to happen? Yeah, start the opening The face starts to open, you start rolling it, and now it's all about timing, 
and a lot of praying while you're on the golf course. <laughs> and for, for like you mentioned, for, for beginning golfers, it's probably better to err a little bit on the side of it being too strong or the face being more, I guess you could say, closed to the back of that, that lead hand. Absolutely, and a, a great way too is to grip it the wrong way around because then the shaft is so thin, I can mm. really feel it in my fingers. Okay. So once again, when it's in the fingers, you can hear what? More speed, okay. see? Yeah. If it's in the palm, slows down the club head. Mm -hmm. So as soon as it's in the fingers of the left hand, I can rotate it, I can move, my body can move better because the body reacts to the face. Yep. So to me, the grip is number one. Okay, awesome. Now, how about other parts of the swing? Uh, setup or, or just kind of building a pivot? You know, high handicap golfers, and you know they're high handicappers because their fundamentals are poor. They don't set up with their feet either wide enough apart so they can really swing in balance. But what I like people to feel is when they bend over, it's like diving in a swimming pool. They can bounce up and down. So what are you going to feel? Board joints into your hips. Okay. You see? So you can feel. Get your knees straight, then slightly flex them, and you can feel your butt comes out a little bit, and now you can bounce up and down, and now you can really turn around your spine axis when you do that. What's also important, you don't want to set up with your toes two in or Donald Duck two out, because that's going to cause restriction. So slightly out with both feet, so now your knees can rotate, your right hip can get behind you, and the same thing is going to happen back and through. Okay. And also what happens too, when people set up, you need to make sure that you have spine tilt, slight spine tilt. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't start behind the ball, and most people always hear they fade the ball, is because they start leaning too forward. So their spine starts leaning to the left. Now that restricts the turn. Mm. So what we want to do is get the spine behind. So now we can feel the left shoulder goes down, left hip goes across, and then the left knee follows. Okay. So the head doesn't have to sway around. It can stay pretty centered. And you can see today, pros, they turn their shoulders past 90. Yeah, definitely. So once you start moving your head to the right, yeah, really you difficult, you see? Mm -hmm. So you really want to set up there, slight spine tilt, and now you can turn back turn through and keep your body angles. Okay, okay, great. So we've built we've built a setup. Yeah. Taught us how to grip it. Yeah. Great stuff for beginners. How about now when someone wants to learn how to like control the face, how to really sort of relate the face in their golf swing. I've also seen you use awesome little props like a like a tennis racket for example. Yes. Okay. So again, like I said to you before, you know, the body reacts to the face. So a lot of people play tennis, but what I love about a tennis racket, you can set it up, you don't want to get it too open, too closed, and now I put my left hand on my right shoulder, so I really can feel when I turn around my spine angle, I'm starting to feel pressure in my right side. You can see my left shoulder gets across, so I'm not staying on my left side and then I'm going to back out. So I turn nicely, and then the club I can feel shallow, and now I feel like I got it down the line, Roger Federer forehand, bam, and finish into my left side. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people in the winter, off season, they can do these things indoors, and then you're gonna create more feel and your body's gonna start reacting a lot better. So you can do it nice and slowly, and then create more speed. Mm -hmm. And the harder you go. And now you can see when I finish, I finish straight up and down. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating what? More stability, balance, and allowing my body to turn back and through. Got it. And, and then how about we want to add some dynamics to the swing, some pop to it. You can take a soccer ball, and what's so much fun about it is because you want to make sure that the arms and your body work together. Okay. So once your arm and your body work together, you're going to be more in sync. So if I stand here, and I turn to the right, and then I throw it to you, I can feel that, where do I release the club? Mm -hmm. So feel that, get in good posture, Absolutely. So what happens is, if your body works poorly, you're going to either throw it to the right, or you're going to throw it too late, and then you're in trouble. So really get in your good setup. It also allows where your hands are. They're not too close to your body, they're not too far away. And now you can feel that. Turn to the right, turn to the left. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Good job. All right. So, so you can actually feel the core yeah. also working, you yeah. see? And it's nice, you can turn back, you feel how your hips work. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So it's really allowing what? Your right shoulder to stay low and through, so your right shoulder is not coming up. And a lot of high handicappers, 
when they start their swing, move forward mm. and then back. So this really allows you to turn around your spine and to keep your side bent. What about for the, the better player who, you know, falls into certain tendencies? You've obviously worked with some of the, the, the best golfers in the world. Yeah. Um, what are some good drills for them? Well, the thing is about, you know, better players is you start to work on direction. So it's path and face. Mm -hmm. So a good one too is to teach them to do a bit of a club awareness drill. Okay. So you can put the club next to their side and they can look down and see the face square and they can start by working first on their move away. Yeah. So they don't want to roll it away and they don't want, they can't drag it, see? So now they can get halfway back, they feel the club more in balance. Mm. See, so the butt in the club points more between the ball and then they turn to the top. Mm -hmm. See, good. And then you set the club, see, go halfway back for me, right to here first, mm -hmm. good. Now turn to the top so you finish. Now you can feel the next move, what's the shallowing of the club. What are you feeling? Your left side, what is it doing? See, more pressure into that left side. Mm -hmm. Now when you come through, you can see where the butt end of the club goes. Yep. So most people, especially with better and intermediate players, what do they start doing? They start pushing, moving forward, mm. losing their angles. Yep. So when I feel that the butt end has to go behind me, what's that doing to my chest? Just making it stay down. Stay it. down. Yeah. And then when you, you know, you can finish into a nice finish for the cameras. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that feel a go. So that, that actually felt really nice. Okay, so I'm gonna sort of imagine the club going up my left side right yeah, there. Yeah. Take away. Pressure into that left side, chest stays down and through. Good. Yeah. Nice. That looked good. Yeah, that felt really solid. Gary, you've been coaching for a long time, tons of experience. What is something you know now that you wish you had known in the beginning of your coaching career? Well, you know, when I was growing up, I started to play golf at a young age and it took me a long time. And then uh, my hero was Nick Faldo. So if you looked at that, you could see that my personality was more on the perfectionistic side. So I spent so many years trying to have the most perfect golf swing and forgot to focus on my strengths. So, you know, the biggest thing that I've learned since I've been coaching is not to stand there and be critical and judgmental. And so when I get to my players and I see that, I, I say to them, what are the things that's gonna make you great? So focus on your strengths. And instead of being a perfectionist, this create a plan of action that can get you to the next level. So that's the biggest thing that I've learned and I've changed, you know, a lot of coaches' careers doing that because you know a lot of them are very hard on themselves because most of us didn't make it in golf and then we decided to be teachers and coaches and so uh, for them you know they have to go out there and be an example to their students so going out there to have a passion and an excitement and really enjoying what they're doing being more childlike being more logical is way better than being critical and judgmental and being a perfectionist because you live in your head and you don't live in your heart and once I can get a player out of their head into their heart, they do amazing things. Gary, one of the things I've always appreciated about your coaching is how you train golfers very holistically. It's not just about hitting a golf ball better, but how do you do things in the gym? You do a lot of things with bands, weights, just really bringing people's development of the golf skills out through their exercise in the gym. Maybe you can share with us some of those things. Well, you know, starting the Junior Academy, most young players never spend most time in the gym. But you can see it's become one of the greatest things for young people to do to get an edge. Mm. And um, so we have all ages, and so some have no functional movement at all. So sometimes we get them to throw a ball, which is kind of fun because if they're throwing a ball, you can see they start getting more dynamic. They can feel the their uh, ability to move from one side to the next. Mm. But then once you start uh, moving them into weight training, they get a lot more strength. And now today it's become a game of power and speed, hitting it further, it's a big advantage. And so if they can start young, pretty much they have, you know, two opportunities where they can work on their speed, which will help them tremendously throughout their golf career. So show us some of this way to create this stability through like band work. Okay. You can hold one end, Okay. you see? So the most important thing for me, you can start with the backswing. And so you can get your feet narrow. And then what I like the, the 
player to do is to step to the right and then pull across their body. Mm. So guess what starts to happen here? I can feel my core being engaged. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people, the weight goes on the outside and also the left side has no stability. So you could do this like four times. One, two, three, four. And then you hold it for a little while. Okay. All right, Gary, that, that felt really good. What, what else do you have with a band? Well, flexibility. Okay. So here we have a band which you can go buy anywhere. I love this. Yeah. You can put it behind your shoulders, get your arms out, get in good posture, and really feel yourself turn back and through. Mm. So this allows you again to feel the rotation that's needed okay. at the same time. Also with this band, what I love, it can help you in your backswing too. You can put pressure there under your foot, grab it here, and work on your backswing. Mm. So, you know, one of my tendencies, narrow. Yeah. Guess what this helps me get? Mm. Nice and wide. And then I can just put in my right hand, and then when it comes down, it's just I can feel my right hand come right yeah. in front of me. Yeah. So I pull it, pull it, pull it, so I can really feel core, feel stable in my lower body, and then back to the ball. Beautiful. So it's easy, it's fun, you can use it in many different ways. Got it. And you got a dumbbell over there, what, what would you use that for? You know, today with power, explosive power, it's kind of fun to grab one of these. For me, squatting is fantastic, especially for posture. Yeah. So you find a lot of juniors when they're standing, they get rounded. Mm. So when they squat, they squat like this. So now you can really get your butt out and lift it. Mm. Down, and up, yeah. down, up. And then you can change arms, you see? You do both sides, like this. Gary? I'm impressed. This can help anybody, right? This helps with stability, is that correct? Absolutely. Well, I can feel that over time, I'm going to get stronger in my legs, in my core, my arms, and my shoulders. So that's going to make me more explosive through impact. Okay, so now this stability helps with the body motion. And then how, do you, how would you transfer this speed to the club? Well, here's a great training aid here that I give my students. And you can just take this, get it off the ground. And what I love about this is a total body workout. So I make them make swings back and through. So as they get here, they're pulling it back. Mm. And they get quicker and quicker. And then like the fourth one, all the way through. Yeah. So the fun thing about this, you can take your driver and feel the same thing. So you get it off the ground like this and you feel the same. Mm -hmm. So where do you feel the speed? Yep. You see, you don't pull here, you feel the speed just before the ball and through. Yep, yep, yep. So doing that, I can feel that it's going to help with my endurance, and slowly but surely I'm going to get faster. For years I've called it like train like a champion. Okay. You know, the better your training, the better the quality, the better you're going to get over time. Gary, give us a bold statement. Maybe something that you believe that's really important in coaching and instruction that's different than, than sort of the mainstream trends that we see. Well, today you look, it's a lot on technique, different ways to swing the club. Technology is a big part of the game. So when I started, I was an instructor. We just gave lesson after lesson after lesson. And then I moved on to junior golf, where I had to learn how to become a coach. And so, you know, instead of teaching a philosophy, I want to teach a person. And so my life, I'm a people person, so I've made great relationships worldwide. I really feel that even with my golf academy, life outside of golf was very important. How these young kids deal with their academics, how they deal with communicating with their parents, how they deal with relationships. And so creating that balance has really helped. Mm. And so like I always want to encourage people, if you love technology, that's fantastic. But how do you take that? and make it a plus. Because like anything, for every plus, there's a minus. So as long as you balance it, yeah. you'll be okay. Gary, we've worked on our swing. We've worked on how to develop motion with bands in the gym, with weights. How do we now take this to the golf course? Well, what's very important is that you want to build consistency in your ball flight. So I don't care who you are as a player, you need to know there are certain ABCs to do to create a draw, fade, hitting it low, high, and by working on the range, it's gonna help you tremendously take that to the golf course. What are some of these ABCs that we need to incorporate? Well, the first thing that I've done, I've put three balls in a row, and they aim at the target. So first of all, you wanna make sure when you stand behind, you see that your alignment is gonna be correct because most amateurs and even pros, they start aiming way too far to the right 
or far to the left. And that causes a poor what? Move away, transition to the outside or two to the inside, and the ball starts to fly in a different direction. So by doing this, for me, it's really fun to do, as I can set up to this ball and I want to hit a slight draw, I can take it slightly in the back ball, come down from the inside and slightly out to the right. Mm. If I stand far to the right, it's going to go more inside, more outside. But what most high handicappers do is they do the opposite. They go in and make a loop to the out side. And also what it helps you do is put the ball position in the right spot because the ball position controls alignment. Mm. The further back I put the ball, the further forward. Mm. So when I'm working on, you know, a launch monitor, as soon as I move the ball, my path starts to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here I can stand here, put the ball further forward, I can feel the club stays on the outside and then moves on the inside. So it goes like this. Gotcha. So straight away there, I can feel that the club face, if it comes slightly from the outside, I keep the face square. If it comes way outside, the face is open, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flick my hands and hook it. I see, I see. So, okay, so this is great. So if someone had a path that was out to in, it's hitting a slice, you would tend to move the ball farther back to help incorporate? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, so straight away there, now your shoulders, where your arms swing along your shoulder line, is gonna improve that. Mm -hmm. If I open my shoulders, now it's gonna start me what? Moving more left. So the release changes. When I swing left, I hold it through. Mm -hmm. So also, so many people I want to hit it straight, then you have to stand more square. And for me, I try and do more of a three-quarter swing and hold it through so the face doesn't move. Okay, what are some other ways we can take this to the course? You know, you want to also work on trajectory. Okay. So as you're doing that, I can aim right, put the ball further back. So now I can just go like this. Now the ball slight little draw and it's lower. Okay. Or I can go, okay, I've just hit a poor drive, I have to hit high soft shot over a bunk onto the green. Now put the ball further forward, open the face. Now I can hit a high fade. So it's fantastic just to take the ball and move it around. But at the same time, you can always walk behind, double check where the balls are, and make sure that you're walking into it. And straight away, as soon as your alignment improves, your path and face will improve. Gary, you have worked with four number one golfers in the world. There's a, a great skill as a coach to take someone from playing good, developing the swing mechanics that you're looking to, to, to do, take it to the golf course, but then really helping them excel in that highly competitive environment. Well, first of all, the most important is to get to know them. Their personalities, they're all so different. They do things differently. Some love going to the gym, some hate the gym. Some love hitting balls, some prefer to play. So getting to know your student is number one. Number two is for you as a coach is to really start focusing on their strength. Because when they start struggling, they only see their weaknesses. So once you start with the plus, then you can say from there because you start building more confidence in them. What are the things you need to work on? And then you start working on those areas. So now they have a plan, they have a solution for improvement. So then when I go to the golf course and I watch them play, that's when I start looking at their routine, their body language. If I see poor body language, I know there's poor self-talk. Also how they react to a shot. So once they start putting their focus in the right spot, being able to accept a shot, move on, maybe having a practice rehearsal, and then putting the club back in their bag so they don't put a bad swing back in their bag, I think is essential and then teaching them also how to be a good coach to themselves, how they can encourage themselves. And so for me, routine is one of them, okay. one of the biggies. Can you take us through maybe a couple of the, the, the core things you're looking for in someone's routine? Something that people watching right now can take to their own game? Yeah, I see so many amateurs, you know, they don't go through their pre-shot, they don't look and see their lie, they don't figure out the wind. But first of all, when I get there, I make a plan, look at what I want to do, check out the shot I want to hit, then I see the shot, and then I rehearse the shot. So if it's a draw, I really feel in to out and finish in balance. Once I make my two practice swings, I'll stand behind it, look where I'm going, and then the most important thing to me is body language. So the greatest players in the world, they're not down, you don't see any, they're like this, chest out, look where they're going, and then they walk into the ball, they're looking at their target. Then they put the face, aim the face to where you want to go, move into the ball, 
waggle the club, trigger, some kick their right knee, Jack Nicholas cocked his head. There's so many ways to do it. Some don't even ground the club and then bam. And off it goes. Mm -hmm. So if you hit a good shot, it's good to what? Deposit something good in your head. That yep. was great. Put the club in the bag because the more you deposit good things and emotion in your head, the better it's going to be. Okay. And then you want to, if you hit a poor shot, you just want to rehearse it, maybe one swing. Put the club in the bag and off you do it. You yep. walk. Head up again, good body language, and continue doing that again and again. Yeah, I love that. But now you go to the tour and the, some of the players are standing there for hours and hours and hours hitting balls. Mm. Well, what are you telling your mind? Yeah. So even that some of the players that struggle, if you had to walk up to them and said, oh, you know, Tiger, I believe you're driving it poorly. You can't hit your drive in the fairway. What is he going to say to you? Mm. You're out of your mind. Yeah. I can hit it in the fairway. Yeah. Okay, so now what are you thinking? To hit it in the fairway. No, I'm feeling. I'm trusting. And me as your coach, what is the one thing we came up with that you can trust in and do? So it's not three different thoughts. It goes back to one and maybe a waggle, a thought, a setup, position. So most of the time with great players, their confidence comes from their setup. So I know if I put the ball forward every time, Patrick Candley, love him, stands there like this, guess where the club's going? If you look at his swing on video, hey, us coaches can get pretty critical on anybody's swing. And he goes like this, out. Boom, through, holds it, hits little fades and wins how many million? Yeah. Simple. And then what happens to his full swing goes into his short game. So if you really want to go from good to great, it has to go through your entire game. Yeah. But if you stay in a technical mindset, it's going to get into your short game and then it's goodbye. Mm. Gary, great stuff. Again, you've taken three golfers to number one. You've helped someone else who was at number one. So you've worked with four number ones over your career. I mean, you can't get more impressive than that. Um, you're a legend of the game, developing juniors. Really appreciate you today. Well, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, I just keep going and enjoying the game, enjoying coaching the game. And I love going worldwide to inspire young teachers. And, you know, like I said, we met so many years ago and look at you today. So I'm very proud of you and congratulations on everything that you achieved. I appreciate that. And you did inspire me. I, I worked for you. I mean, it was probably almost 20 years ago and it was, it was an inspiring environment to be around. So thank you.